here we see the first graphic for, for pattern A. And it's pretty self-explanatory on the one ball, so let's take a look at graphic. That's the second graphic for pattern A. Now you should note how the four ball and the five ball come up in the graphic while you're shooting the two ball. And that's because how you get on the three ball is going to dictate how you're able to get from the four to the five. So you should be well aware of those two balls by the time you get to the two ball. And now you see how the six ball pops up on the screen by the time you get to the three ball. And that's because how you shoot the three and get on the four will dictate where you get on the five and how you're able to get on the six. So it's all piecing together and you have to keep thinking ahead like this until you're completely done with the nine ball. We have a little bit of an angle here. So this is being shot with just a little bit of bottom, straight bottom, no right or left. And you're just stun drawing this out for straight in shot on the two ball. I'm putting just a hair top on this to roll down and try to get straight in on the three. Now I know there's other ways to play this three and you can play a draw, a, a stun draw shot to get back on the four if you get a little bit of an angle on the three and that would be fine. It's just not my style of play. If your style of play is different and achieves the same objective then that's great. Go for it. And don't forget, at this point in the game, you should be well aware of where that four ball is and where that five ball is and how you want to get on those two balls. This is being shot with bottom right. And I'm just drawn straight back to myself off that left hand side rail and a little bit further back up table to get the right angle on the four in order to get to the five to get the right angle on the six. And now we need to take a look at the graphics for the second pattern. Right now that we're past pattern A, we're going to pattern B. And just focusing on the first three shots in pattern B, which would be the four, five, and six. And that's at the point that you're shooting the four. Once we get to the five, we'll be focusing on more balls. Um, but right now I'm just shooting this to get center table, about center table, but I am flirting with getting behind that six ball, so it's a little bit dangerous, but I need that angle when shooting the five ball in order to get to the place that I need to be on the six. So here we are shooting on the five in the second graphic in pattern B, and while you're shooting the five, you should be well aware of where the seven is and how where you want to get on the six to get to that seven in order to get back on the eight which also pops up in the graphic. So be, be aware of where those two balls are, seven and the eight, as you're shooting the five ball. The last ball in pattern B is the six ball, and that's, that's the key ball to connect pattern B with pattern C. And now we're joined by the nine ball. So as you're shooting the six ball, you should be well aware of how you're going to get from the six to the seven, the 7 to the 8, and the 8 to the 9. It looks like I'm putting a whole lot of bottom on this ball, but I'm just putting a little bit of bottom just to kind of drag the cue ball to the 4 ball and keep it from going further up table. I just want to hit that side rail and come straight across the table for a shot on the 5.
remember now as you're shooting this five you should be well aware of where you want to be on that seven to get to that eight ball and that will dictate where you're going to get on this six ball in order to get that position on that seven and that'll dictate how you shoot this five ball and in this case i want to shoot that five the same way it's the same shot as that four ball it's just the opposite angle and I just want to come straight off that right hand rail straight across the table for a shot on the six in this pocket down here. It the six does go by the eight, so you don't have to worry about that. And that'll allow me a short stroke to get back on the seven ball in order to get the right position on the eight to get back to the nine. I came up a little bit short on the six. I wanted to get straight in and just hit it, you know, just to get a little bit of an angle on the seven ball. But like I said, I didn't quite get there. So now I'm going to draw this ball a little bit on a force draw to that left hand side rail and a bounce off that side rail. Once again, I just want to go straight across the table and I bounce out for a little bit of an angle on that seven. Not my best shot, mate. As you saw in the video, I barely got to the rail, let alone bounce off it and get the right angle on the 7. So now I have a bit of an extreme angle, or more extreme than I wanted, um, on, on the 7 ball to get back on the 8. So I'm going to have to settle for a long shot on the eight ball so this is at the last last pattern of the rack it's pattern c and this is the beginning of it there's no more patterns so you don't once you get past these three balls you don't have to think any further and the game should get easier um, but for a lot of players they tend to get in trouble and the game gets more difficult as they get to the end you know you're playing good nine ball if the game it's easier as you go. So as you're about to see, we were left long on the eight ball, and we're going to have to put an extreme draw shot. But I mean, you don't have to put a Jason Shaw shot on this. You don't want to get carried away. You just want to keep that cue ball on the right side of the table, and it's okay if you come up short on the nine ball. So here's what we're left with on the nine ball. It could have been better. It all came down to how I shot that six ball and didn't get the right angle on the seven. But it is what it is. And this one didn't get easier as we went, but most of them do. Um, you just have to stay in line. People see me jacked up like this and they, and they tell me I'm all wrong, but I've been doing it this way my whole life and it has always worked for me. We're putting extreme draw on this seven ball to avoid uh, both scratching and hitting that nine ball. I want to avoid both scenarios. If I just put center ball on this, I'm going to hit the nine. If I don't draw it enough, I'm going to scratch in that top right hand corner there. Or that bottom right hand corner. So I just, you know, I'm, I'm just drawn out of that situation off the right hand rail and bounce out a little bit for a shot on the eight. Ball. Straight draw here, you just want to get back down table as far as you can, but you want to stay on that right hand side of the table. You don't want to do a Z pattern here, it's too, uh, it's too iffy, and we don't have to have a simple shot on the 9 as long as we have a decent shot on the 9. So that's your objective, just be safe. Yeah, that worked out just fine. It must have been a little bit of nervousness in that last shot because I just let out a whole lungful of air in 
and I mean a lot. I must have been holding back some excess tension. Anyhow, I have a couple inches off that rail, so there's no need to put any left or right hand English on this. Just dead center ball. Stroke it as good as you can. Keep a straight stroke. Don't twist your wrist. All that good stuff. Thank you guys for tuning in. We're going to watch the whole video through from the one through the nine. Uh, in real time, uncut, no yak, and all that good stuff.